All right. I can see people are still joining, but uh, I believe we can uh, we can start. We only got uh, 30 minutes scheduled for this webinar, but uh, I don't think it will be that long. My name is uh, Stefan Tanase, and uh, I'd like to say uh, thank you for uh, joining our uh, second webinar for uh, 2022. It's uh, going to be a special webinar. It's a little bit different than uh, than uh, what I'm used to doing because uh, we're not going to talk about threats that much. We're not going to talk about the uh, ever evolving threat landscape, but instead I want to introduce you to our new uh, cyber defense feed. Uh, but before we start, uh, just a couple of words about uh, your hosts today, about CSIS and who we are. Uh, we are a cybersecurity company uh, founded in Copenhagen in 20, uh, 2003. Uh, we have more than 70 employees ranging from uh, over 25 different nationalities. Uh, we're the proud hosts of the uh, Copenhagen Cybercrime Conference, which uh, hopefully this year, if all goes well from a COVID point of view, is going to be held uh, uh, in, uh, in real life again. Um, and um, we were recently credited by the Gartner Group for uh, both our actionable and world-known threat intelligence capabilities, but also for our innovative security products, uh, forensics capabilities, and uh, incident response. Uh, so with this in mind, why, um, why are we talking about the cyber defense feed today? The, the main reason is that uh, CM platform's uh, adoption is growing. So, uh, uh, pretty much every organization out there is uh, trying to implement uh, security information and event management systems uh, in order to uh, take care of their own organizational needs, whether these needs are uh, about the uh, continuous monitoring of the uh, security situation, uh, they can be incident response, in some cases it can be because of uh, compliance or other uh, needed standards uh, or certifications, and last but not least, of course, to manage logs uh, inside an organization and to better understand the uh, security posture and the uh, threats that are facing the organization. Usually the larger the organization is, the, the more needs to, to manage these, uh, uh, these logs. Uh, are and to uh, to be able to use them in a meaningful way. At the same time, at uh, CSIS, we are uh, world known for our uh, cyber threat intelligence capabilities. Uh, basically, the team that I'm part of, the eCrime team, uh, we do a lot of interesting things that uh, really help advance our uh, CTI capabilities. We're very good at doing reverse engineering, uh, at analyzing uh, malware such as uh, historically speaking, banking trojans or uh, remote access tools, but nowadays uh, mostly focused on uh, uh, ransomware and other uh, kind of uh, financial threats that are not targeting online banking per se. Uh, we're very good at tracking and investigating malware campaigns. And uh, actually this is something that uh, uh, that helped us quite a lot during the years because it's what uh, led us to do very good cooperation with law enforcement organizations from uh, from around the world in trying to uh, pin down and uh, catch the uh, actors responsible for the most sophisticated malicious uh, campaigns that have targeted our users and uh, internet users uh, generally at large. And of course, the results from all of this uh, activity uh, generates a lot of very good unique and fresh indicators of compromise, uh, command and control servers, or generally, you know, IPs or domains that are involved in uh, malicious activity. Uh, the reason why I wanted to give you this introduction is so that you understand that uh, at CSIS, cyber threat intelligence is our lifeblood. Uh, cyber threat intelligence is at the heart of uh, what we do because Basically, what this means is that we, uh, we have managed to create the synergy effect between all of the activities that we do as at, uh, CSIS, uh, ranging from incident response, uh, using uh, proprietary tools such as CERC or Kronos, uh, our 24-7 uh, managed detection and response service, and of course, things, uh, other tools and systems that we're running, such as the FishDB, our anti-phishing solution. All of these activities, they revolve around cyber threat intelligence. They use our cyber threat intelligence, but they also give back a lot of unique insights about uh, the latest threats, the latest behaviors of uh, threat actors. And uh, essentially, it's what helps our CTI team to get leads into what threats are relevant for uh, everyone nowadays. 
So this is what we've been doing for um, more than a decade now. We were involved in uh, researching threat actors and we generally malware targeting financial sector. Uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays uh, we're essentially tracking the most sophisticated threats that are, uh, that are happening out there. Uh, of course, the crime as a service uh, trend has changed the threat landscape a little bit. So uh, now we're seeing a lot of initial access brokers uh, leveraging their initial access, selling them uh, to more sophisticated groups that are known to do lateral movement with tools such as Cobo Strike, and that usually leads to, uh, to ransom. But uh, the gist of it is all the data that we collect through all of these sources, it's usually further correlated with open source intelligence, with the passive DNS monitoring, and of course, with the very good collaboration and cooperation that we do together with uh, external partners in order to uh, uh, understand better the, the threats that we are all, uh, all facing. So with this background in mind, I'd like to introduce you to uh, our new cyber defense feed. Uh, which is basically a uh, curated feed that is focusing on malicious or suspicious uh, network indicators, so specifically domain names and IP addresses uh, that are enhanced with an associated uh, confidence score that is calculated through uh, our propri proprietary methods. Uh, basically, the algorithm that we have developed is uh, based on the foundation of the uh, extensive experience that we have in uh, CTI inside CSIS, uh, the knowledge and the research of the CTI team, but also uh, the other teams that are doing incident response and uh, uh, trying to uh, essentially improve the security posture of the organizations that we are uh, uh, dealing with. Uh, what I think is very important to keep in mind about this new feed is that it can be purchased and accessed independently of your access to our uh, threat intelligence platform or portal. Uh, and basically, this is a feed that is meant to be integrated with uh, SIAM platforms, uh, and that is meant to be used inside the production environment in order to, uh, to stop uh, real threats from uh, targeting your organization. The, um, what's helping us to make sure that these indicators can be used inside production environments is the uh, confidence score that we calculate for each indicator that is part of this uh, new cyber defense feed. And um, this confidence scores calculation is based on uh, our longstanding partnership uh, together with the uh, Farsight Security, uh, which uh, essentially uh, posts and provides the best passive DNS database or passive DNS data collection uh, in the world. The reason why I'm saying this is because this is passive DNS that is based on uh, real human internet traffic. It's not uh, automated passive DNS based on, uh, let's say, sandbox detonations or uh, other types of uh, automated activity that uh, researchers are doing. So it's uh, the kind of passive DNS data that gives us a very good idea over where uh, internet traffic is going to at every moment. And this is what allows us to essentially better understand how, uh, uh, how to enrich our current uh, threat intelligence. It uh, gives us a better understanding of what things we should block and what things we should not block. So it's basically uh, this, uh, this uh, passive DNS data and the partnership with Farsight Security is what enables us to uh, create these confidence scores that you can actually trust for every threat intelligence indicator that is uh, present in our uh, data platform. Um, to give you more details about how, uh, what this confidence scoring calculation means, uh, basically it's a calculation that helps us answer various questions. And uh, these questions uh, look like this, uh, such as how important is this IP address or domain name on the internet? Basically, a passive DNS data will give us a real indication about uh, uh, how big the volume of real human traffic is towards a certain network indicator, such as an IP or domain. Uh, this helps us understand how confident we are that this IP address or domain name is involved in the malicious activity. So, of course, for this, we look at the historical relevance of the data that we have uh, surrounding that specific network indicator. Uh, and also, we leverage our experience exclusive uh, CTI research to help us determine uh, the degree of maliciousness. But at the same time, uh, another very important question that we need to answer and we need to take into account is uh, 
would we be in trouble if this IP address or domain name gets blocked on a production network? Uh, this is very important because uh, many times, and especially nowadays, uh, attackers will leverage legit infrastructure, uh, legit uh, internet infrastructure such as Cloudflare, such as uh, shared hosting providers in order to deliver their malicious payloads. But uh, this is something that we could not block at a network level because it would generate uh, troubles for uh, you know, legit users of the network who are just trying to access the, the websites and the resources that they need. So it's a... Uh, it's a very tricky to reach this balance, but I believe we are very good at doing this because of the, uh, the data that we have at hand. And this is what enables us to create essentially these uh, scoring calculations to give every indicator a score from uh, zero to 100, where 100 means we are the most confident that uh, this uh, network indicator is malicious and it should be blocked. And where zero is, of course, uh, you shouldn't block this and we're not very confident about uh, the maliciousness of this, uh, this indicator. What's another thing that is very relevant about this, uh, this new feed that we're talking about is that uh, the whole idea behind it was uh, for it to be easily uh, uh, integratable with uh, CM platforms such as uh, Microsoft Azure Sentinel. And uh, this is one method of ingesting this, uh, this uh, feed into your security products. So we call this the push method because with the uh, Microsoft Azure Sentinel, we're essentially leveraging the uh, Sentinel Graph API in order to push these indicators into your, uh, into your Sentinel platform. Uh, this is uh, something that is uh, very easy to integrate. Uh, it's something that takes just a couple of minutes. And uh, if you subscribe to these feeds, you're gonna be able to use the uh, indicators that we push directly into your uh, Sentinel platform. Uh, this is how it looks like uh, on our uh, test uh, showcase uh, Sentinel platform. Uh, also, if you look at uh, <clears throat> how often we push the indicators, we usually push them, uh, of course, how, uh, as soon as uh, we calculate the uh, confidence score for each indicator. So we can say that this is a uh, real-time uh, server defense feed. The uh, other method for uh, ingesting the uh, information that we provide, the intelligence that we provide, is uh, also used for uh, generically integrating this uh, feed with any kind of uh, security solution appliance or, or platform. And uh, this is happening because we're also delivering this feed as a CSV file. Uh, where basically every IP and every domain is listed in the CSV file together with its uh, associated uh, confidence score so that it can be easily imported in uh, any kind of uh, appliance uh, that is uh, useful in your organization. Um, from a commercial point of view, we decided to divide this feed into different uh, into two different packages based on uh, how much data they contain and uh, how um, and how uh, they will be used in your organization. And uh, the first uh, the first uh, option is the essential option, uh, the essential package, which uh, essentially consists of uh, domain names and IP addresses that are related to malicious activities, and uh, that we are very confident that uh, that these are uh, really malicious and that they should be blocked in. Uh, um, in security appliances. Uh, this feed is basically a uh, subset of all the indicators that we have, and it's just a subset of the indicators that we have the maximum confidence that they can be used in uh, actively uh, stopping the tax. Uh, this feed can be ingested through both the push and pull methods, so we can push it directly to your uh, Azure Sentinel, for instance, or you can pull it through the CSV file, and then you can use it to uh, integrate it in any other kind of uh, security platform. Um, the other uh, option is to go for the advanced feed, which essentially includes everything that is uh, included with the essential package, uh, together with uh, all of the other uh, indicators that we don't include in the essential package, basically every indicator that has a confidence score, uh, which is uh, bigger than 50. So everything from uh, 50 to 100 will be included in this, uh, in this uh, advanced feed 
uh, version. Uh, this uh, version can only be uh, ingested through uh, through the CSV file, so you can pull it anytime you want. Uh, we also update it in real time, and then you can uh, use it to set up custom rules and alerts based on the uh, confidence score. Um, the thing is, because of this, because this feed contains uh, considerably more data than uh, the essential feed. We usually recommend it to uh, only to organizations which are uh, mature enough and uh, that have uh, uh, security teams which can uh, which can leverage this feed for things such as uh, enriching already existing data, uh, doing incident response. Not necessarily you're using all of these indicators for uh, actively blocking uh, malicious traffic in your uh, organization's network. Um, so just a couple of uh, use cases for the the feeds that we are uh, talking about of course the uh, the main use case is the uh, detection and the uh, incident prevention uh, basically uh, the, the the feeds that we're uh, we're discussing are uh, suited to be consumed by any solution that is in place in your uh, in your organization in order to protect your uh, it environment from uh, from malicious threats uh, the main purpose is, of course, to detect network traffic, attempting to, to reach a domain or IP address that we know is involved in uh, malicious activity, either to automatically block this, uh, this traffic or to let it pass through, but at the same time to alert the security personnel responsible to the, for the security of the organization and to closely monitor the associated activity on that specific uh, uh, endpoint. Uh, of course, uh, there's different ways to handle this. Outgoing traffic will suggest a possible infected host uh, inside the network, uh, whereas incoming traffic coming from a known malicious host will, will, host will suggest that uh, uh, threat actors are sc scanning your perimeter from the outside, looking for possible vulnerabilities or uh, manually trying to compromise the network as the first uh, uh, initial step of uh, entry. This is the most basic use case, uh, and this is what the essential feed is used for to detect and to prevent uh, cybersecurity incidents in your organizations. Um, another use case is, of course, like I mentioned, uh, for organizations which are more mature from a cybersecurity point of view, uh, which is to do research and to do enrichment of already existing uh, data. Uh, so basically, in larger specialized organizations that have in-house uh, capabilities for doing this kind of uh, research and uh, um, uh, and uh, data enrichment, that's where we usually recommend the uh, advanced feed that uh, is really valuable in complementing ongoing investigations of uh, particular malware campaigns or other kind of threat actor um, activity. Basically, this feed is very good to be used in uh, enriching data that is already collected uh, elsewhere in order to get a uh, you know, better picture of the, the, the whole attack at scale, the purpose of the uh, campaign, and the severity of the, of the threat. Um, one example in how, uh, how some customers uh, that we have, especially in the financial area, are using our, uh, our data is, for instance, to use our feed for uh, compromised e-commerce shops in order to correlate it with uh, both network traffic and fraudulent activity uh, and basically try to identify credit card fraud uh, as uh, early as possible in the, uh, in the attack chain. Um, last but not least, and this is the latest use case that I wanted to, uh, to mention, which is uh, the investigation, uh, the containment, and generally doing incident response after an incident happens. Uh, because the reality is that, uh, unfortunately, it's not always possible to prevent a security incident, especially if we're talking about very large organizations, uh, even the ones that have the best security solution and uh, the best security personnel. Uh, but the thing is, our, uh, our feeds are essentially continuously updated in, uh, in real time. So uh, it's very useful to, uh, to use them for enriching data whenever doing incident response. Uh, because uh, it can easily uh, uh, it can easily point out that hey there's a command and control server that has been accessed before the ransomware has been deployed or look there's some network traffic that is pointing to a known COBOL strike uh, beacon server again before the uh, encryption took place. Uh, for this, of course, both the essential and the advanced feeds are, uh, are recommended, but probably the advanced feed is what you want in order to get access to the full set of uh, indicators, even the ones that don't have the 100% uh, um, uh, maliciousness confidence uh, scores in there. Um, 
So just to summarize everything we talked about, and this is uh, basically uh, the, the, the whole story, we're getting close to the, uh, to the last slide. Uh, the new cyber defense uh, feed that we're offering in different flavors. So that's why I call them uh, cyber defense feeds. It's uh, actionable threat intelligence that is ready to be used in uh, your production environments. Uh, we say that this is ready to be used in production environments specifically because of what stays at the, the, the core of this project, which is the confidence scoring that we, uh, we calculate uh, based on the uh, extensive uh, knowledge and research that the CTI team is doing and based on the, all the historical data that we have accumulated in uh, CSIS throughout, uh, throughout all of these years of activity together also with the partnership with Farsight that gives us access to the world's best passive DNS uh, data. Um, as I mentioned, and this is something that you need to remember, the cyber defense feed comes in uh, two flavors. Uh, the essential flavor, which is a subset of the indicators, just the ones that we are most confident about. And this is what we recommend for actively blocking network traffic without uh, worrying that this uh, active blocking is going to cause uh, too much headaches or troubles in terms of false positives. And uh, the second option, the second flavor is the uh, advanced version of the cyber defense feed, which uh, is used for data enrichment only in organizations that are mature enough to be able to, uh, to do this. Uh, we're offering seamless integration with uh, various uh, CM platforms. Uh, I basically focused on Microsoft uh, Sentinel because I think that's one of the, uh, the most important ones and one of the, the major players that our customers are uh, asking us about. But of course, these feeds can be pushed in uh, any kind of uh, CM platform, uh, and we can easily discuss integrating them in your uh, platform uh, of, um, of your needs. Um, last but not least, uh, just before we end, I'd like to, um, uh, to encourage you to get engaged with, uh, with us, with CSIS. Uh, we try to be very active on social media, so I encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter in order to always stay up to date with uh, uh, our latest uh, content and also to visit our new website which is css.com uh, where you're going to see uh, we're going to be able to read our threat matrix reports and to join future webinars uh, such as uh, this one so with this in mind i'd like to say uh, thank you for uh, for paying attention uh, thank you for being here um, and if there's any questions uh, feel free to ask in the uh, in the chat that we have available I see there's uh, I see there's no questions, uh, which uh, makes me happy. It means that everything was clear. Again, I encourage you to visit CSS.com. There you'll be able to download a brochure about the uh, cyber defense uh, feed that we've been talking about today. Uh, also, um, make sure to get in touch with us in case you want uh, more details or uh, in case you want to try out uh, these new feeds and the integration that we have with, uh, with uh, Azure Sentinel. And uh, with this in mind, I'd like to say uh, thanks once again for uh, joining us this morning and uh, wish you a wonderful day going forward.